Thank you for joining Analytics Today, a podcast series that focuses on big data and analytics and latest trends in the digital world. I'm your co-host, Dr. Jeremy Roberts, and with me always is Samir Khan. Hey, Samir, how are you doing? Hey, how are you, Jeremy? Hey, good. Good new year, and we got some exciting new topics. And, you, you know, the job market's been interesting. I, I, You know, there's a lot of people out there looking to either, you know, find something new or to upskill or to just kind of disrupt their team. And they, they want to try to find these new trends. I'm, I'm just guessing you've seen that too, I'm sure, right? Yeah, it's very interesting how the job market is. I mean, I stopped believing the media, to be honest, in terms of what they say <laughs> about the job market, <laughs> because it's no use. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, But when you go on the social media and when you actually talk to people and see what they are experiencing and and then you see these one-off layoffs that are happening, but at the same time, companies are making enormous amount of profits. So it just does, doesn't make sense. Like there are a lot of weird and ambiguous things going on right now. So here's my thing. Obviously, if you're a leader of a very large publicly traded company, don't throw me under the bus here. But my thing is, you know, you knew that you're increasing hiring. You knew that you were, you know, hiring 50 new people, 100 new people. And at the end of the day, when you feel like, oh, wow, we have to go ahead and lay off all these people, it's one of those things that your job is always safe, but you're laying off everybody else, the hard workers. Mm -hmm. And who was the one who made the decision to hire? You did. Yeah. You're the one who made the decision to hire. And then all of a sudden you're laying off all these people. Well, you know what? It's okay to tell the stock market, I'm sorry, we're not going to really hit our goals yet because we're trying to keep jobs for 500 people or a thousand people. I mean, I would respect a company more and then be willing to take a little bit of a drop in my stock price just because I know there's longevity because once you start doing that, loyalty's out the door. You know, people start leaving, people start jumping ship. They realize, wow, this company's never gonna be loyal to me ever again. So yeah. something's going on. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And rant and scene. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. so let, let right. So let, let, let's get into today's topic. So today's topic really, you know, <coughs> excuse me, Samir and I were focused on trying to figure out, uh, you know, things that leaders can do, right? And for us, we're always focused on, you know, leadership, trying to upskill, trying to disrupt, trying to do better. And we came up with something. And one of the things we want to talk about today is in 2024, there are seven key strategies for transformational success. And so I guess, Samir, before we get to the topic, when we talk about transformation and success, who is our target audience for this? Who, who, who should we be talking to here or who should be listening? Yeah, that's a great question. And I really like the topic. I'm very fascinated about it because we're starting the journey in 2024. And it's important for us to take into consideration the leadership aspect of it. Because in one side, you can have you can easily get carried away by the new shiny digital technology or AI right now is the yep. big buzzword, AI, Gen AI in particular. It's very easy to get carried away with that. But then what we want to focus in on, as Jeremy was alluding to, the target audience today are the leaders in the organization. So anyone who is mm -hmm. managing or managing teams, director or above, or even managers who are in day-to-day -day managing teams yep. that does digital transformation work. So that's the target audience. Fantastic. Okay, so with that in mind, even if aspirational, because we always talk about transition in this in this show, we always talk about people who want to transition, right? If you are not a people manager, you have the aspiration to be a people manager. And so one of the things is you got to start acting like it, right? They say dress the part. Well, for us, rather than Samir and I saying dress the part, we like to say act the part, right? Act like a manager, right? Start doing managerial things. And so these are some of the things you can start to do. Find a mentor, right? Find somebody that you really admire or even your own personal manager and start to mimic and not say do exactly what they do. Do it in your own way, but, you know, mimic some of those tendencies or, or actions <clears throat> that you see a manager take. So let's start with the first one. Mm -hmm. So the first one here is embrace emerging technologies. So that sounds like a common buzzword. Everybody's like, well, yeah, common technology is AI. Well, it's a little bit more than that, right? So I'll give a quick summary of what that means, and then Samir and I will go into some detail, right? So embracing emerging technologies, really what it means is 
you know, digital leaders must stay up to speed on emerging technologies such as AI, blockchain, quantum computing. So where do we want to start, Samir? Do we do we want to start with the like understanding what does it mean by technologies? Or do we want to talk about what do you mean by up to speed? Who should we be listening to, following? How, how do you want to go there? Well, so the, the uh, I'll give you a very specific example. So some organizations, sure. when Gen AI, which had GPT particularly, was launched last fall, we uh, want a large majority of the people were excited. But there were a lot yeah. of organizations that tried it in the beginning. They experienced some issues within the privacy realm for the organization. So they took, they scaled back and said, well, no, we're not ready for it because what if proprietary documentation could be uploaded in Gen AI and in chat GPT and could be trained with my proprietary document, which could become now a public domain, which is definitely a scary situation. And you don't want that to happen. And then on the other side of the spectrum, some organization just waited. They'll say, hey, we're not just going to dive into the shiny new technology, but we are going to just wait and think through this more deeply and then enable yeah. this. So that's where I feel like organizations are on the spectrum. On the far right, people are like, you know, gunko about it. They're using ChatGPT every day, like a company that reminds me that is really putting the employees first and then they're leveraging ChatGPT pretty much for everything. Uh, what's that? Zappos. I think Zappos is one of the on yeah. the leading edge of using ChatGPT. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have more traditional organization on the left side. They're not ready for it. Uh, they're still thinking about it and they are putting together a more thoughtful approach. Um, so you could be in, on any side of the spectrum, but the idea is sooner or later, you have to use AI, especially Gen AI, mm -hmm. because your employees are already using it if you want them to use it or not. Oh, yeah. They might not be using it in your devices, but they're using already. So as you as a so leader, you how do you, yeah, you as a leader, how do you start thinking about yeah. the adoption of these latest tools and technology for your business that is applicable directly to your business? 100%. So one of the things, um, and you and I have spoken about this before, but one of the things I used to do, man, this was even back in 20, 2013 to 2015, I was working for this company and I was leading this team of people who, you know, who were always, I guess, eager to learn new types of marketing once a month. And if we had a request twice a month, but usually we do a half day on a Friday and we do training classes. We talk about emerging new uh, marketing. We talk about new things. We train each other. So either I'd have a guest speaker or somebody who's an expert would come in and talk about, here are the brand new SEO best practices. Here are the brand new best practices on our new email service provider that we're using or this new retargeting tool. You could do the same thing for AI. Rather than get mad at your employees for saying, well, why don't you write it yourself? Stop using AI. Well, that's not the case. Teach them how mm -hmm. to best use AI. The, the efficiency, the time and the efficiency rating that they would have would skyrocket. Imagine saying, hey, guess what? You know, um, I know it's going to take you a long time to write this new co copy for the website that, or this page that we have to build. Why don't you we teach you how to throw it in chat, chat GPT? And then from there, you can output that and then edit it specific towards our audience. Or let me teach you how to best build it towards our audience, right? You got to exactly. embrace that emerging technology. And, and and it's not just you. Here's the thing. Management, and Samir and I have said this before, management is the ability to manage. Remember this up, down, and to the side? Remember that one? Yes. Or way back in Rackspace yes. days? Yeah. So you're managing up, meaning you should be talking to your leadership and teaching them on the on new emerging technologies because sometimes when you're at a director level and you have a VP, they're not looking in the detail. They're not watching the videos on the new emerging technology. They're not trying to learn new things. They're just trying to run the business and keep their job. They're making sure everybody's doing okay. It's your job as the director to then say, hey, guess what? I learned this new thing. Let me set a 30 minute meeting with you and let me show you all this really cool stuff. I really think this would be um, you know, make us more efficient in our team. Something we should invest time in. You know what no, I mean? No, that's very well I said. Mean, yeah, I agree. Yeah. So, uh, so with that, so I guess what are some closing things? Like, so when we talk about embracing emerging technologies. You know, we talked about the first, the first thing to do, right? The first thing to do is just embrace it, right? Just understand it. New things, if not, learn. Do a webinar. Go out and try new things. If not, whatever. Now, before we go into the next thing, 
Well, actually, um, the next one is related, about, right? Because yeah. we, it's kind of related because we are. Yeah. It goes hand in hand. So the next one is the fostering the culture of innovation, which kind of teeds yeah. into the first one, which is embracing technology. Because if you're fostering a culture of innovation where you're taking yeah. calculated risks, like for example, Google does it really well. They allocate for every employee, they allocate 20% of their time to learn new things. And that yes. that's why Google is what Google is, because they are fostering yeah. that culture of innovation. They're allowing the employees to spend time in their work hours, not outside, you know, in their work hours to do additional learning and capability learning yes. and skill learning. So then they can become successful. And then, you know, that leads to products like Google Maps, Google Gmail, or all the Google products, they come from these 20% innovation time yeah. that the employees are spending. So that's very important um, leading point on embracing technologies. You need to foster that culture, allow your employees to do this type of learning and Generating learning new skills, and you got to give them the time. You know, it's one of those things. If you give your employees time, you say, "We have this time and day of the week or something that's dedicated for you to learn." Don't disrupt that. I mean, obviously, if there is an emergency or a fire drill, and all of a sudden you got to go and do stuff, and mm -hmm. you know something's hit the fan, and everybody's got to go work, go work. But don't just take that away and be like, "Hey, you know." So one of the managers said something to me and they think that you guys are just messing around on your typical Fridays with your, you know, bringing in lunch and everybody, you know, it's just, no, you know, hold true, protect your team, stand up for your team and say, no, this is part of our culture. Yeah. This is what we should be doing. We should embrace, you know, and foster that culture of innovation, but embrace those new technologies. So stand up. That's another one. Stand up for your team. <laughs> right agreed and that, that's not one of our seven it's one yes. of the leadership qualities stand, right fundamental leadership stand qualities. up for your team <laughs> stand Very up good. for your team it's a big <laughs> deal okay so that we got number one was embrace emerging technologies number two is fostering a culture of innovation right number three invest in talent and training this kind of goes together right mm -hmm. we talk about navigating digital transformation successfully we're talking about upskilling, you know, with new technologies and methodologies. Let's go into detail with that one. So get, get, I guess you want to start with maybe an example of what you mean by talent and training. Well, it's mainly upskilling, right? So there is one. Okay. Yeah. So there's one idea where you give your employees. And it's not the just time. hiring new people, right? It's not just no, no, hiring new people. It's right? not just hiring new okay. people. No, it's, it's upskilling okay, cool. your existing workforce. So when we talked about giving people the time during their workday to allocate towards learning new skill, that's one way to do that. But yes. when you invest, like let's take an example. If I take people in my group, in my team, and I tell them like, hey, I have been given $10,000 for you to go learn new skills. And I'm going to make sure that my A players who definitely need to be upskilled and my B players as well. I'm going to allocate these funds for them to go learn something new. So, hey, Joe Smith, I'm going to give you $3,000 in this yeah. quarter. Go find a course, a certification or anything like that and go do this in a deliberate way instead of you doing in your 20% time. You know, you, you, you can continue doing that, but here is the money for you to go and upskill yourself. And Amazon does yeah. this really well. As, as you know, They basically focus on employees and they allocate budgets and funding to allow them to learn new things like you know, f becoming better at Gen AI, become learning new database yeah. technology, learning new machine learning. So that's a deliberate intent to investing in your talent and training. Cool. I like that. No. And, and the thing is, when you talk about that, you know, it, it, and it comes back to the upskill, upskill doesn't mean, uh, let me, let me say it in this very specific way so I don't say it the wrong way. Uh, upskilling mean, it, it means tweaking. It means getting better, right? It, it just means like tr staying up with the new trends. It doesn't mean that they're trying to completely replace you. No. You know what I mean? It doesn't mean that we're trying to say, hey, we have this whole new thing. We're going to completely change your job. We want you to learn something completely different. Like if you have a job role, we're not trying to make you go and do cross-functional learning. That's a completely different topic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're just trying to say, get better, get better at what you do. Learn the latest. Yeah. And I'm going to fund you to get better. Right. So I'm going to sponsor you to get better. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and, and this, and this has nothing to do with, don't think this is a pip. 
right? Don't think this is like a way to say, hey, you know, we need you to improve yourself uh, because you're falling behind or you're not up to date with our other employees or you're old school. It's not that. Mm -hmm. We just want to say, hey, you're upskilling, right? You're trying to find new technologies, new methodologies. That's the biggest one. And methodologies equals efficiency. Efficiency equals increased revenue and increased productivity. And it's fantastic. So you should Great. always do that. Okay. So we got three. Emerging and uh, embrace emerging technologies, fostering a culture of innovation, investing in talent and training. The fourth one, implement agile and flexible work practices. So embracing agile methodologies, flexible work arrangements can accelerate digital transformation. So the first question here before you go into the details, Samir, are we telling everybody to go and get their agile training certification? Or is it really kind of like the, you know, the understanding of agile methodologies? This is a very interesting topic and a little controversial one because there is a lot of, if you go read on the internet and participate in some of the discussions that are happening, uh, there is a, there is a group that actually is against agile. And according to them, the agile (laughs) methodologies impede the work progress. Now, I'm, I'm on the fence on both sides, right? I'm, I'm definitely a big avid believer in implementing Agile, especially in large organizations. But if you're yep. a small, nimble startup, Agile may not be the right thing for you. For you, working iteratively in, which again, it's, you know, whether it's Agile or not, but quickly delivering solutions and then retesting and redelivering it in the small teams without necessarily having the notion of Agile methodologies, you can still do that you can develop launch fail fast and then go back to the development cycle again instead of doing the iterated development that's what agile is but in the large organization when you're managing large projects across many different countries and regions and there are many people involved you have spread out resources you need to have some discipline around it and that's the discipline is agile framework and so then the next part of the discussion that we have is the flexible working environment which is Again, very important because when you give the people, when you implement the Agile framework, it allows you to have the capacity planning based on the flexibility of the work. So let's say if I know in certain countries they're going to get a month holiday mandatory uh, based on their governmental requirements that they have to take in a year. So I'm going to take that into consideration in my long-term Agile framework planning. Uh, And and Spotify is a great example that does that really well where they emphasize on having autonomous teams. So the teams themselves are making decisions and they're doing a rapid iteration, but they're staying within the framework and they already have the capacity plan for the long term to deliver for success. I like that. I like that. And I think there's really not much more to say about that. I mean, it's just, you know, the times are changing. Obviously, there's a huge disruption after COVID, you know, we're still evolving into what is the new norm? What is the new baseline? Yeah. So you, you just got to be flexible. You got to be. Yeah. Flexible. And I, I think it's funny you say that because it, I'm just chuckling on it. When you start reading what's happening today, you know, like, you know, when COVID was there, everybody was remote, right? Yeah. There was a lot of flexibility. Yeah. But then when people start coming back, the organization slowly kept themselves in the hybrid mode. And then, then they forced people trying to bring them to the office. And then right now what's yep. happening, it's going back again. It didn't work. And so the organization thought like, oh, you know, remote work, we're going to bring everyone back in the office. You know, the vibe, the culture, the engagement back. that's going to happen to come back. And Nobody wanted to come back. But no. yeah, there was a, it, it, they, it worked. It, it actually worked for like six to eight months when you saw this big news that fa- Facebook is asking yeah. everyone to move to Palo Alto. Google and AWS are asking everyone to move back to uh, California. But it, it didn't work. And then now you're seeing no. organizations are bringing that flexibility back again. It, it works. I mean, the thing is, is that, okay, I, and this is a side rant, but the thing is, it depends on the level, right? You know, if, if you're entry level, if you're, and I'm not saying entry level in a bad way, but if you're like you're fresh out of college. Yeah, you're just starting out. You're yeah. just joining. You're just starting out and it's your first time in an office. Sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need the structure, you know, I I remember, you know, in in my experience, a lot of times when we had people fresh out of college and they were coming in to the job, they, they aligned them with mentors. So we got to mentor a lot of these people and their biggest question was, you know, they have me working from home for a little bit. What do I do with my day? 
You know, how do I structure my meetings? How does like, and, and you have to explain that. So the thing is having that structure of coming into the office, being able to engage and ask those questions and be able to be, you know, available or be, you have your manager be available to you or you be available to your team. That's a big deal. You it can't, is. you can't, you can't supplement that with anything else, but it just experience. So you have to experience that. So I, I, I completely believe you have to have a hybrid. You have to be changing. You know, I, I know there's some remote positions that, that I was even, you know, I saw online where people are saying, yeah, come into the office every other week. So let's say they're, uh, if we're in Texas and the position is in Washington, D.C., every other week they want you to be in the office from like Monday through Thursday, mm -hmm. right? Because they want you to have that experience of the experience. being there and then you go yeah. back. And you, yeah, just that kind of thing. So no, very cool sense. stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we have embracing emerging technologies, foster culture of innovation, invest in talent and training, implement agile and flexible work practices. Number five is to prioritize customer experience. So just FYI, customer experience is still big. It's not going anywhere, right? And the thing is, customer experience, even though COVID transformed the way customer experience was given through digital technologies and digital transformation, we can't just say, oh, wow, well, well, that was just COVID. Now we go back to normal. No, it's no, changed. Customer you experience keep doing is it. at the front and the center. And in fact, with the new technology, yeah. it's even more important to keep the customer experience at the front and the center and make sure like, you know, one, one thing I, we always talk about the personalization, right? And we yep. always give the example of Netflix. They do it so really well that once you watch something, they're going to take the data and they're going to personalize the recommendations. And then what's going to yep. happen? You're binging. You're binge watching on the content. Well, why? It's not just because yeah. you're kind of addicted to it. It's because also the recommendations are aligned to what you really like to watch. And why do you think, and you, sometimes you see a brand new Netflix movie that just came out with the same actor that's in all the movies that you see. It's the same genre, same story. Yeah. You know why? They use the data to make a movie. Yeah, they're putting <laughs> the customer it. at the front and the center. Exactly. Yeah. They said we, we have millions of subscribers that always watch an Adam Sandler movie with this leading actress. You know that one with Adam Sandler and Jennifer Aniston where they're like spies yeah, or whatever? Yeah, the spy thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a corny movie, but the thing is everybody watched it because – they like that combination of those two together. Right. And they like the spy buddy cop where they, they're they like a couple, but then they fall back in love mm -hmm. and there's some action. They they yeah, use data to make a movie. Really like it. That's it. But yeah, they use data to make a movie. And, and that's basically all you have to say is, you know what I mean? Customer experience is absolutely everything. Okay, so let's go to number six. Mm -hmm. It's improve cybersecurity measures. Now, this is a big one just because of this new AI push, right? So Samir, let's go into this one if you want to give some detail around improving cybersecurity measures. Yeah, and, and so this one is interesting. And, and like you said, that we are now going into the realm of AI being accessible, particularly right now, Gen AI, and then future different types of AI technology yeah. being readily accessible in many cases, freely accessible to a lot of people. Yes. How do you protect yourself, your organization, your people against the threat? Because as you can think, these technologies are also now available to the threat and bad actors. Uh, and they're going to do whatever it takes to have identify vulnerabilities in your organization and then act on it and they can compromise an organization very quickly. And as you and I were talking about before this call, uh, before this meeting that we're having, that there is a lot of uh, Facebook messages that we're getting on spam and scam. Uh, same thing is happening on Twitter, uh, on Telegram. Mm -hmm. It's happening everywhere and it's only increasing. In fact, I was thinking about how do we leverage Gen AI to combat this? Not only the scams that are happening on people asking for your password, but people asking for your money and promising you... Yes a great future because now I see this scam that's happening on Twitter like, you know, hey, get this really nice Notion document and you can make $10,000 a month using Gen AI. I mean, those types of scams are really growing 
How do you bring your employee yeah. to understand this? Not only giving them an annual training, oh, cybersecurity training, go take this, it's a mandatory course, but also enabling them to implement cybersecurity best practices on their day-to-day. Uh, IBM does it really well, so they basically not only conduct the training, but they also use, they give the employee the tools that they can use on a day-to-day basis to detect the threat within their environment and you know maybe in their laptop as well. Yeah, wow. I don't think there's much more to add to that. I mean, the thing is, if I do add to that, I'm going to go off on a huge tangent on all the different scammers and all the different things that just... We, <laughs> We, we joked about this before we went live today. And I messed with them. Samir got mad at me. He's like, dude, why are you engaging with them? Why are you responding back to them? <laughs> leave them and alone. And of course, you block them. You, you, <laughs> yeah. You, your philosophy is block them, leave them alone. My, yeah. What I love to do is just to mess with them. You know, just to, <laughs> hey, how you doing? Hey, man, this is great. And just. Hey, it's funny you say that because I watched this video. (laughs) This guy actually does that. So he specialized it and he gets like millions of YouTube views. He messes up with these people who fake, fake like government entity asking your privacy information and he messes the call centers in India and stuff like that. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And he turns on their camera inside their call center and then he says, and there's like, this is Fred Johnson. He's like, no, your name is Amir. He's like, no, 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 there's no Amir here. He's like, no. Your name is Amir. He says, I'm looking at your computer right now. And he says, turn around and look at the, at the camera and the camera. And he's like, wave at the camera. And he's like, you don't know where we are. And he tells, he shows them a picture on Google Maps exactly where they're located. It's crazy. Oh, I love, so I love fantastic. that guy. I yeah. mean, this is, he does awesome stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's funny to even watch some of his YouTube videos. Oh yeah, no, no, they're they're great, they're great. And then he does the voices where he pretends to be the old lady, and yeah, that's always fantastic. Okay, so last one, number seven here. So we got, and we'll go through the list after. So the last one is drive sustainability through digital initiatives. So you can see there is obviously a theme here of digital transformation. So we talk about driving sustainability through digital initiatives. We're talking about how leaders really should leverage that digital transformation to support sustainability okay so mm-hmm. let's first have samir describe where we talk about sustainability sustainability can mean very different things to very different people obviously we're not talking about sustainability of the environment and the earth we're talking about sustainability within a business which which leads to the sustainability within the yes. earth right so it, it's okay. reducing the yes. carbon footprint improving yes. energy efficiency so you consume energy appropriately and also promoting sustainable practices, even at the work environment, like keeping, making sure that you have a simple example, like a trash can for anything that can be recyclable. So using a trash can for that. Some companies that comes to me in my mind, like, you know, Microsoft is another example. They are on a stance to become a carbon negative by 2030. And that's a big undertaking that they're taking. It's a large corporation, so it's not easy. So how do you go and start implementing these practices across your organization to promote sustainability, to develop healthy practices. What's going to happen is once the employee starts doing it at the work, they're going to do it at home. So it's double benefit exactly. on implementing the sustainable strategies. And how can you do through digital initiatives? You can. The way you can do it, a simple example is in the laptop of an employee, there could be a simple calculator or a graph that shows them based on the usage of the device, how much they're consuming energy or how much they're saving energy. That's just one great example. So I'm going to be cautious because right now when I'm using my laptop at work, I don't know what exactly I need to do to keep my energy at at the best rate possible from an efficiency standpoint, um, from energy consumption. So that's an important, like you can use AI to do that as, as a starting point in your employee devices. Oh, no, I completely agree. And I guess what I'm also getting at is that it starts in the workplace. So we're talking about this is something, practices that you can use from your home, from you do in your neighborhood and your community, but start these initiatives in your workplace to build a more sustainable business. And that way, then that bleeds back out in the community. Yeah. So it's that kind of reverse, right? So it's one of those things, taking the best practices outside of work, bringing them inside to work, and then having that bleed back out in the community, because then... You, you then build out a, another way for your team to bond, another way for your team to really, you know, to, to build that type of, you know, community. It's like you're building a community, uh, right? 
Yeah, building. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you're also building another great um, uh, prioritization for customer experience. Customers would love to see these businesses, you know, focus on sustainability. Okay, so go over the seven. We'll talk about the seven topics, or just reiterate the seven topics again, and then we'll kind of close out today. So, first one is embracing emerging technologies, fostering culture of innovation investing in talent and training, implementing agile and flexible work practices, prioritize customer experience, improving cybersecurity measures, and driving sustainability through digital initiatives. And this was all the 2024 Seven Key Strategies for Transformational Success. Yeah, and, and, and you don't have to use every single one of them in 2024, but no. we brought up several example. Uh, in this podcast today uh, where you can take one of the examples and go run with that and even if you're successful implementing one of these strategies you're going to be way ahead of most organizations that are only thinking about doing the day-to-day work and meeting the uh, the revenue goals but they're not thinking about the broader aspects of digital transformation so this is where you need to start thinking about it yep absolutely like i said it starts with you you if if somebody else doesn't take an initiative Take the initiative yourself. Be first, right? Make that motion. And if you're not a leader and you want to be that person that wants to, you know, take in that position, talk with your manager about it and then take on these initiatives yourself and start to support them. And then you'll start to see a huge change and and acceptance in all of your actions. Okay. This is fantastic. Yeah. And and one last thing, we now have a much better video. Uh, We upgraded some of our equipment so we can give a better experience to our listeners and watchers as well. So you can go to YouTube and get a much better experience from our video. So look out for the podcast when it goes live and try to go and watch us on YouTube as well. Super fantastic. And keep on bringing us. I think we have like five or six pending guests responses that we need to get back to yeah so we need far, to, quite we need to bring them on the call and have some really good yeah. dialogue with them it's going to be fantastic thank you guys again always reach out to us listen if you have questions please like and share and leave comments we need these to be able to get out there and we're excited samir and i are going to make an effort to actually be much more frequent in 2024 um, rather than just saying, ah, we were busy, we're going to do one every month. No, we're going to be a little bit more deliberative. More diligent here. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Just do it. Do it. See you guys later and have See a good ya. day.